Rather than going with one specific style of horror like most other Resident Evil games do, Resident Evil Village adopts a different approach, using its titular setting to create a horror theme park of sorts with different areas prescribing to different styles, tones, and approaches. From pure action to classic Resident Evil horror, to gothic horror, to psychological dread, there's a lot going on in Village across its many locations. Here we're going to take a look at each of the game's six main larger areas and rank them. Given that there isn't really a bad location in the game, saying that we're ranking them from worst to best wouldn't be entirely accurate. Let's say we're ranking them from good to amazing then. This should go without saying, but there are spoilers ahead for Resident Evil Village. Before we begin, please consider subscribing and enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. With that out of the way, let's get started. Number 6. Moreau's Reservoir Moreau's Reservoir is set in an abandoned fishing village overrun by not only years of decay, but also flooded under large amounts of water. In this domain, the merman horror-inspired Salvatore Moreau is able to run amok as a massive disgusting fish while covering the entire area in his green gelatinous whatever the hell it's called. Moreau's Reservoir is quite short, and though there's certainly puzzles to solve and hidden areas to explore, by and large the area functions more as a prolonged set piece. The parts leading up to the boss fight might not be as strong as some other sections of the game, but thanks to some great optional sections and an amazing boss fight to cap off the area, Moreau's Reservoir still deserves plenty of praise. In death as he was in life. Disgusting. Number 5. Stronghold Resident Evil Village's RE4 influences are most apparent in this area. After dealing with Salvatore Moreau, Ethan heads to the Stronghold, which, in simple terms, is the nest of the entire Lycan population that is haunting the village and tearing it apart. The Stronghold is not particularly long. You can go through it in under an hour, but it's characterized by some of the most tense and thrilling combat encounters of the, in the entire game. Managing your positioning and placement, smartly using your ammo, and using environmental hazards such as explosive barrels and sacks of flour to give you a leg up over what can initially seem like overwhelming swarms of fast-moving lichens makes for some truly memorable combat encounters that feel like they were lifted straight from Resident Evil 4 and translated to first-person gameplay. The Stronghold also ends with an incredible boss fight against the Urius, which serves as the perfect culmination of one of the game's most thrilling sections. Number 4. Castle Dimitrescu Castle Dimitrescu is classic Resident Evil in all the ways that you'd expect. Its labyrinthine, multi-layered design and lock and key progression call back to the RPD, its grand architecture feels strongly reminiscent of the Spencer Mansion, there's more than a few puzzles that are straight from the Resident Evil playbook, its zombie-like enemies wielding swords and maces and the flying gargoyle creatures make for the kind of slow, palpable horror combat encounters that the series is known for. With an underground section, its sizable interiors, and then the roofs, the castle not only sports variety within its framework, it's also a joy to explore, with its nooks and crannies hiding treasures, notes, and more to reward your curiosity. Lady Dimitrescu also functions as a stalker enemy for a big part of the section, and that, combined with the excellent mini boss fights against her daughters and a spectacular boss fight against Lady Dimitrescu herself, elevates the location to entirely new heights. Sure, we would have maybe wanted Lady Dimitrescu to be more of a menacing threat as a stalker enemy, she's no Mr. X, but that's a minor and easily ignorable blemish in an otherwise excellent location. Number 3. The Village The village is the heart, the spine, the foundation of the entire game, which makes sense because it's important enough to make its way into the game's name itself. From beginning to end, the village is an area you keep coming back to time and time again. Its snow-covered environments and its gothic horror create an aesthetic that is entirely new to Resident Evil, while towering spires and towers and statues here and there also contribute to the atmosphere. But more than that, the village is also excellently designed. Each time you come back to it, you're able to explore more and more, and exploration is always thoroughly rewarded, thanks to its winding, interconnected design that feels all too familiar in a Resident Evil game, and thanks to treasures, valuable resources, notes revealing flavorful lore and backstory, hidden areas, enjoyable combat encounters, and more. 
As the hub location that connects all the other main locations of the game, the village succeeds in every way imaginable, and spectacularly so. Number 2. The House Oh man, talk about things Resident Evil has never done before. The moment you open the gate in the ceremony site that leads to the house, you know you're in for something entirely unique from things Resident Evil fans might be used to. The house is also a pretty short section, relatively speaking, but boy does it make a mark. It's easy the scariest section of the entire game, with its palpable dread, foreboding atmosphere, and psychological thrills. From flickering lights to creepy mannequin parts dangling from the ceiling, to the fact that you're completely unarmed and defenseless for most of the section, to of course that giant monstrous baby that chases you at the end. The house builds on its horror constantly, until crescendoing into some truly spectacular stuff. It's a bit of a disappointment there's no proper boss fight against Donna, but within the narrative context of the character, it makes sense. She's not a fighter after all. She uses her creepy hallucinatory powers to mess with her foes. There's also some really good optional content in the area surrounding the house, from exploring its surrounding environments to even coming back to an excellent hidden boss fight, which just makes this location that much better. Number 1. Heisenberg's Factory Heisenberg's factory is, by its very nature, divisive. Some Resident Evil fans probably despise it. Others have mixed feelings. Others still absolutely love it. We fall in that last camp. With the conveyor belts, assembly lines, steampunk machines, and mechanically mutated enemies, it's entirely different from anything Resident Evil has ever done. But it works so well. The enemy design is excellent, leading to some of the most thrilling, challenging, and heart-pounding encounters in the entire game. The design of the location is spectacular, labyrinthian, maze-like, winding and looping on itself, and densely packed. Navigating its rooms and corridors across many floors, slowly unlocking doors and pathways to create shortcuts or gain access to locked areas, and even finding hidden treasure and exploring locked optional rooms is an absolute joy. Meanwhile, the boss fight against that monstrous thing with a giant propeller for a head is also excellently designed and is probably one of the best boss encounters in the entire game. Sure, the boss fight against Heisenberg is not the best, but that hardly sours the experience. Heisenberg's factory is a success on every front. Design, combat encounters, enemies, exploration, you name it. It's probably one of the best areas in any Resident Evil game ever. So, what are your thoughts on this? Go ahead and share them in the comments below. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon to get new video updates. We upload every day and we would really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching.